In this video, I'm going to talk about an application of the delta function uh, in the context of a tank problem. Uh, so you can see I've got a tank here, and uh, you've got we've got sugar dissolved in the tank. There's five liters of water in the tank, and we're pouring in water at a rate of one liter per minute, and also it leaves at a rate of one liter per minute. And the inflow concentration is going to be two grams of sugar per liter. And the outflow will depend on what the concentration is in the vat. And we'll do, we're going to assume that the vat is well mixed. And the added piece here that we haven't discussed before is that at three minutes um, after the system starts going, we're going to add in a sugar cube containing three grams of sugar. And so that is the piece that's going to introduce a delta function. So let me write down the equation. So in general, for these types of systems, we have, uh, we track the mass of the solute. So M prime is going to be the rate of change of the mass, total amount of mass uh, in, the, in the tank. And that will be It'll be changing due to the inflow rate, which will be one liter per minute, multiplied by the, the inflow concentration, C in, which is in this case two grams per liter. And then we have it um, flowing out at the same rate, but now the concentration will be given by the mass in the vat divided by the volume. And then what we need to do is we need to add something that will account for the three grams of sugar. So what would we expect to see? Now, whatever is happening in the solution, we expect to see that the solution will have some shape to it, who knows? And then at three minutes, we're going to add, and so the concentration is suddenly gonna jump up by three grams, where the mass is going to suddenly jump up by three grams, and then it's going to continue going um, uh, you know, as predicted by the differential equation. So what we're going to end up with is a heavy side like jump of amplitude three in the solution. And to explain how that happens, we're going to um, introduce a delta function into the equation here. And so this will be m cubed times delta of t minus t cube, which is three in this case. All right, so that is the equation. So let's fill in some of those details. So we're gonna get m prime equal two minus one over five, which is the one over the volume. Uh, the inflow rate is one liter, so that's the one. And then multiplied by m plus three times delta of t minus three. And if you wanna get a more, uh, a more realistic or more sort of uh, molecular or detailed justification for that delta function, we can think of the mass of the uh, of the um, salt in the t or of the sugar in the tank changing in time as the sugar cube hits it. So you would have no influence from the sugar cube, and then all of a sudden, at some time, as the hit cube hits the surface of the water, the mass starts to dissolve into the water as it enters and then it let's say it just dissolves through at some constant rate which is not really realistic but even if we gave some wobble to it who knows the point is that the total amount of mass is going to be the rate at which it dissolves into the water multiplied by the time so we get this plateau and maybe it'll take a half a second or a tenth of a second or a, even 10 seconds for it to dissolve but we're going to abstract that down into a delta function and that's kind of a, a sort of hand wavy derivation of that delta function term. All right, so now we've got this equation. What are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to use a Laplace transform to um, solve the ODE. So I take the Laplace transform of both sides, and on the left hand side, I get S times capital M. Uh, oh, I should give initial conditions. So let's say we have M of zero. Let's say there's no salt in there initially. We're going to let the inflow fill it up with salt and the, the uh, sorry, salt, uh, salt, sugar. And we'll let the sugar cube dropped in uh, increase that as well. So, uh, so we have S times capital M and then there's no 
m of zero contribute contribution from the Laplace transform of n prime because of the initial condition. And on the other side, we get 2 over s from the transform of 2, the constant 2, and then minus 1 over 5 times capital M plus 3, and the transform of the delta function, as we went over in the previous video, is e to the minus, and now we have 3 times s. That 3 is the time at which the delta function is centered. All right, so that is the transform, and now we solve this for m. So I'm going to have m, uh, capital M, on this side, and that's going to be equal to 2 over s plus 3e to the minus 3s, all divided by s plus 1 fifth. And so I can write that as two separate terms, 2 over s, s plus 1 fifth, plus 3 times e to the minus 3 over s, all divided by s plus 1 over 5. All right, so this is the transform. This is m of s, the transform of our solution. So we want to find the inverse transform, and that's going to require a couple steps. So I will not go through those steps, but I'll leave them as an exercise, and I will just give you a quick summary. So for this term, we're going to do a partial fraction decomposition. So we'll write 2 over s, s plus 1 over 5 is equal to a over s plus b over s plus 1 over 5. And then we calculate the a and b from that partial fraction decomposition. The other term, this one here, 3e to the minus 3s divided by s plus 1 over 5, that's of the form e to the minus 3s times f of s, and we know that that transforms back, inverse transforms to uh, inverse transform of big F, which is little f, of t minus 3 times u sub 3 of t. And so this guy is going to transform back to 3 e to the minus 1 over 5, but instead of multiplying by t, we multiply by t minus 3 because of the exponent up here in this exponential, which gives us the shift from here to there. And then um, we have to now multiply that by the heavy side at 3. And so our overall solution, ah, so if you go through the, um, the method of undetermined coefficients, you should find that a is equal to 10 and b is equal to minus 10. And so what we end up with uh, when we invert both this guy and this guy is the overall solution here is m of t is 10 times 1 minus e to the minus t over 5. So the 1 comes from this 1 over s, and the e to the minus t over 5 comes from the 1 over s plus 1 fifth. And then we add to that the inverse of the delta function term, so that is plus 3u3 multiply, uh, of t multiplied by e to the minus 1 fifth times t minus 3. And so what does this solution look like? There's the function of time, m of t. And so we start off at 0. And um, the function starts to approach exponentially approach 10. And what we get is, now there's two possibilities depending on when 3 happens. And so um, it turns out that 3 is early on in the approach, so it's there. And then we get a jump of 3 and then the solution continues to approach 10 exponentially. If we had waited much later, so this is t equal 3, if we had waited till 10 before we applied the, the um, sugar cube, then the jump would have happened here, and you would have had a somewhat different picture. I mean, m only minor change, but 
it would come down from above because you'd have put in more sugar than the steady state uh, level. But because we did it early enough, we accelerated the approach to steady state without actually going over. And so that is uh, how we handle delta functions in both modeling and in solving the resulting differential equation.